All right, welcome back for another little video in Godot where I'll show some little tips of what I do without knowing it that can help you with coding faster or debugging your game. And yeah, let's see. So the first few tips are about navigating the files faster. So let's say you want to navigate to another file instead of finding the file in the file system and opening it, you can simply control click the script name and it will bring you to it. So here, signal manager, if I hold control and then click it, it's gonna bring me in the signal manager script. So instead of going here and searching for it, then it's a bit faster. And if you control click existing node from Godot, so here texture rec, if I control click this one, it's gonna bring you to the documentation of the nodes. Then the other thing is always searching for the file in here. So if I want to search for the signal manager, I can find it like that also. So yeah, if, if you don't have access to the class name and you want to find it, some people might forget about this search field. So it's, it's useful. Something is I also like to use the already opened scripts. So if I'm working on the items, I could have a bunch of item script open, uh, stats and inventory probably it's faster to access them. And then when you're done, you can simply close the one you don't need or close everything and just start again from there. So keep your work area clean. And another one that might be useful if you have a scene where you have a script attached to a node and like here it's the hotbar node, but let's say I want to know in the file here, I have my hotbar node script, but I want to know on which node it's attached. And to do that, you can simply right click and see the owners. So view owners. Uh, so the owners of this script is on hotbar node TSCM. This one is pretty simple, but for example, if I would put it on load here and save this, and now if I do view owners, I'm gonna see both of them. So it is in this scene and it's also in the main scene. And then if you select it, it's gonna open the scene. Well, this one was already open, but yeah. Next is some coding trick. So let's say you want to load a scene to instantiate it. Here var test is equal to load. So here, instead of writing the path of the scene, I can simply pick it and drag it from the file system into the editor and it's gonna type the path for you. Or you could also just right click and copy path, but yeah, just dragging is pretty fast. All right, so you can create your own resources to store data. You could have your own resources that could go on one scene, or you could have one resources that could be shared on multiple scenes. So let me show you that. For example, if you have monsters in your game, here I have my little monster script GD, and I export a resource, which is monster data. And my monster data, I list all the variables that are needed, then I can create a resource and I can set the value for different monsters. So here I have my folder monster data and I have a hard monster. So if I double click this one, this one has max life 100 and damage 10. So here the value are by default and my simple monster is simply using the default values. And I can set the sprite that the monster will use. So when in my monster GD, my monster scene script, uh, when it's gonna be ready, it's going to get its own data from its data that it, that is set in the inspector. So for example, if I select my monster here, I can give this node a monster data. So I could drag hard monster, and then I could put this one in different scenes. But since I have one monster GD script and I could give them different script, what I can do is I could have a level scene and here I could load my monster scene and I could load my different data. Then you can have your code to spawn the monster. So here I'll spawn two simple monster and one hard. So these are the data file, the resources. And when I spawn, I just instantiate the monster scene and I'll give it the data. And when I call add child, that will do the ready function on the monster, which will set the data. If you want to create a new resource, you can simply right click and then you have new resource and you can type the name of your resource. This is based on the class name of your uh, script. So here my monster data class name is monster data. And if in your levels, the monster are fixed, you could simply have your 2D scene and add your monster to it. So monster TSCN, and then I could 
take this one and give it hard monster and another one and simple monster. One thing that could cause some problem is if you set the life of your monster in the data, so monster data here, if you would have max life and you would also have life, so here, current life, then this could be a problem because in your scene, uh, if you have another monster, so if I duplicate this one, so those two monster are using the same monster data, or the same resource. But the thing is, if I modify it, it's going to also be modified on the other monster. So if you don't want that to happen, you can change the resource to be local to scene. Or if you are setting it from a level here, if you're giving it the data from the code, you can simply type the dot duplicate, duplicate like that. So this will get a copy of the data. So it will split the link kind of, but having the data uh, linked can be useful, but uh, that is mostly for the player data. So if I look at my uh, player, so in here, my player is the troll. So this is my player code and this guy, this is my player scene. And in here I have player data. So this resource is here, but it's also used in the player stat window. So here it's my little panel to show the, the stats of the player and I have the player data. So it's, it's sharing the same resource. And if the player stats changes from somewhere, it will also be updated here. And in this script, I simply connect to a signal. And when it's emitted, I'll modify the, the stats here. And on the player data, I can use this to connect the different speed and stats that the player have. So you can reuse the same resource to have the same data. Uh, but yeah, there is a lot more to the resource than just that. You could also save them and other stuff. So yeah, you could take a look at the resources if you don't know them already. All right, so the next thing is the signal manager. Let's say that when your monster dies, uh, you want it to count toward an achievement, give you some score and give some experience to the player. Uh, you could call those here in the die function, but then your enemy needs to have access to those nodes or systems. What you can do is use a signal bus or manager to have global events. So I like to use a signal manager. It's just a script that contains signal. That's it. So here, signal manager. So in here, I have some signal that are emitted from the inventory, from interactable UI. So here I could add a signal for the monster that dies. Monster died. And when a monster dies, it will emit the signal monster died and it will send itself. So the monster node. So then if I look at my monster here, I could replace all of this for signal manager emit signal. And in here I have monster died and I'll set self. Oh, and when I, I say monster node here, this is not really needed. You could uh, just leave it like that, but I like to have it. So I know what is sent with the signal. And then now that this is emitted, any script that needs to listen to it can just connect. So for now I could go in my level and here I could listen to that signal. So signal manager dot connect monster died on this script. So self, and I will connect it to on monster died like that. If I just want to count points, probably function on monster died. This is the monster. So here I could have a, a score variable at the top and then the points that the monster gives could be in its data. So monster data dot score. I don't have the score in there, but yeah, that's just an, a little example. So you could connect to that signal anywhere you need it and look at the data that the monster have. All right. So another thing is when you want to set properties of a node, if I look at the monster, so here, let's say you want to set the color of the modulate, but you're not sure how to call it. You can simply drag the name here. So if I click modulate and drag it in here, so I can have it there. And it works also for anything in here. So you can mouse over to know the name and you can drag it to have it. All right. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is the debugging. This is pretty useful. If you're uh, having issues in your code, you can either press F9 to set a point or click next to the line and it will add a point. And when you play your game, it will break there. If I start the game, 
now it's stopped right there. So it's trying to add an item and I can mouse over them to know what it is. So this is only giving me the ID of the item, but here at the bottom, I have item. So I can click this object and I have all of its data. So that's pretty useful if you want to know what's happening in your code while it's running. So now you can kind of see if the data of your stuff is not correct then you can try to figure out why. So if you press F10, it's going to go over the lines. But if you press F11, it will go inside. So here I have a function put item. It didn't go in here. And now it's down here. It's going to try to place the item in the first available slot. And it's going to call the try put item. So if I press F11, it will go inside this one. If I would press F11 again, it would go in the function accept item. But if I press F10, it's going to go over this one and it's going to go back. So that's how you could look at the data while the game is running to, to validate that everything is all right. One thing is you should not debug uh, random stuff. So for example, in my item manager, this one, I have randomized at the top and I'm generating items in here. But if I would have a problem with how they generate, it would be hard to debug it because each time I would come here to, to look at the data, it would be different. So what you can do when you want to debug random stuff, you can create your own random number generator. So here I could, I could create a, a variable RNG, which is a random number generator. So when I start, I could have RNG is equal random number generator dot new. I would not call the randomize, but instead I would set the RNG seed to something that I want. So I can say your seed is one. Then anywhere in the code that I'm calling the random functions. So here when I generate the rarity, I can simply use the RNG rand f. So that's the same, but it's not using the global. It's going to use the one that I, I set with the set seed. So then every time you start, it's going to give you the same item. So you can, you, you can play around with the seed until you get an item that has the problem you have or, or anything that you're randomizing, when you get the bug or the problem, then you can look at the data more in detail and take your time. And when you're done, you can simply randomize it. And there you go. Then you're back in full randomness. And when you get error message, if you can figure out what's the problem, Google is your friend. But also, as you get more experience with the engine, you will get more familiar with the errors. And you should try as much as you can to understand the errors, because the next time you see it, you'll know exactly where to look. When I get an error, I don't know how to fix. I don't code around it. I really try to fix it and understand what's the problem. So yeah, the experience you'll get, the more you code, the more you get errors, the more you'll know what to do the next time it happens. Yep, yeah, it's all part of the learning process and it's normal to struggle like I'm still struggling to name my variables correctly, but that is something else. And one last tip is if you want to know something in the engine or there's a node you want to know more about its function and stuff. So like random number generator, you could also control click it. But if there's a function, you remember the name, but you don't remember where it is. So you can press F1 and type it. So uh, lerp. So yeah, now I found the lerp function. What does it do? You can look at the description here and yeah, you can search anything about nodes and the function they have. That is really helpful. And yeah, that's about it. I hope you got something from all of these. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.